again, it is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to this video, which is basically a reaction to the comments on my video on you have to be gas safe registered and competent to do so to work on gas. But before we get into this video, and if you're new to the channel, please could you take some time to subscribe because it does help the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when I'm uploading videos. Sundays at the moment. And don't forget to give us that thumbs up. Anyway, that's enough waffling and messing around, so let's get on with it and find out what this is all about. So, like I've just said, this video is a reaction video to comments. Well, it's basically to one guy's comments where a load of other guys jumped in on it. And this is from Mike's Electrical Stuff. Well, he basically threw down the gauntlet to me. He wanted me to prove it that uh, you have to be competent and gas safe registered to work on gas. Now, how I, naive was I thinking I already had? But he's put a few questions out there what I need to answer. So that's what I'm hopefully gonna try and do. So the first thing good old Mike said was, I hadn't busted the myth, as you can see with his comment down here. So hopefully in this video, we are gonna finally, finally, finally put this to bed that you have to be competent and gas safe registered to work on gas in the UK. So, fingers crossed that in this video, I actually put it across to good old Mike that you do need to be competent and gas safe registered. Now, first of all, I'd just like to thank Mike because really he did put across a pretty good argument. But the first thing is Mike, are you looking in the actual correct and up-to-date regulations? So these are the gas safety installation and use regulations. And this one was brought out in way back in 1998. But then we changed to this one in 2018 where they amended it. So first of all, Mike, are you looking at the right regulation? Because they are not slightly different, they are quite different. Anyway, let's see what Mike puts across first then. Now, the first thing that Mike says is, you haven't shown how the gas regs define competence, which is the crux of the matter. The dictionary definition is, having the necessary ability, knowledge or skill to do something successfully. Okay, first of all, let's see what the dictionary does say about being competent. Competent, having the necessary ability, knowledge or skill to do something successfully. A highly competent surgeon. Well, yeah, you're correct. That's what the dictionary does say about being competent. Well, hopefully we'll find out what your argument is about that in a minute. He then goes on to say, do the regs define competent as something else? I don't know. No, you don't, mate, because you've not read them. Anyway, if not, then the dictionary definition would seem to be appropriate if it came down to being a legal matter. Hmm, so Michael, you think your defense would be the dictionary in a court of law? That's interesting. But anyway, let's carry on. He then says in brackets, I believe electrical regs and or part P do include a redefinition, which is something like being a member of NIC, IEC, or similar, but that's a whole nother story. I'm not quite sure there, uh, Mike, where your argument is for competent in a court of law. So you're going to stand up in a court of law and say you are competent to work on gas even though you're not classed as a competent engineer or gas safe registered because the dictionary said competent means someone who's got the relevant knowledge. So you've read the book, you've read the regulations. Mm, uh, anyway, <laughs> let's find out actually and see if we can put this to bed and see if this new version of the gas safety installation and use regulations, remember the 2018 version does actually say what competent means. So here are the gas safety installation and use regulations. So this is the old version, the 1998 version, and this is the 2018 version. The biggest difference is, in this one, it doesn't have this uh, ACOP, which stands for a code of practice. So what's a code of practice then? 
A code of practice has been approved by the Health and Safety Executive with the consent of the Secretary of State and it gives practical advice on how to comply with the law. So the difference in these two straight away is this doesn't have a code of practice so we can get rid of this now. And we can closely now look at this code of practice and see if this gives us the guidelines on what they say a gas engineer needs to be when they are competent. Gas work should only be undertaken A. By a person who has successfully completed an industry recognised training course followed by assessment of competence. Training that leads to assessment of competence in the safe gas work should be recognised by an industry standard setting out body or B. In the case of currently or previously registered persons where they have provided competency through a certification scheme or C. For those working in premises that fall outside the scope of the regulations, see regulations 2.4, and associated guidance by a person who has successfully completed an appropriate full training course followed by assessment of competence. So you can see here it says they think somebody who's competent is somebody who has, like I said in my first video, completed a managed learning programme, or an MLP, to train to be a gas engineer, then taken examinations, theory-wise and practically, before they can become a member of a class of persons, which is under the uh, Health and Safety Executive, so gas safe. It also says is, if you have previously been gas safe registered, you've still got to prove your competency every five years, basically. So that's the difference between the old and the new. So Mike, when you say what actually makes you competent, the dictionary doesn't come in here, but this, a code of practice does. So if you were brought up into court and they said, prove your competency, and you say, well, the dictionary says I'm competent because I've read the book, they would then throw a code of practice at you and say, no, this clearly states that you should only work on gas if you have done a managed learning programme, done an ACS assessment, and the gas safe registered. But you've already had me there, haven't you, Mike, with where it says should. So let's see what Mike says. Now, Mike's actually quoted out of the 2018 version of the gas safety installation and use regulations here. He says, 81. Gas work should only be undertaken, A, by a person who has successfully completed an industry recognised training course, followed by assessment of competence. Note the word should and not must. So Mike is kind of trying to say there that because it doesn't say you must do it, that means you doesn't have to do it. Really? Shall we see what the difference is between should and must? So let's have a look at the word should first in the dictionary. So the dictionary says it's a verb and number one, used to indicate an obligation, duty or correctness. Typically when criticizing somebody's actions, he should have been careful. Two, used to indicate what is probable. So 348 million should be enough to buy him out. Note there the criticizing word, and we'll come back to that in a minute. So next, shall we have a look at must? So the dictionary also says must is a verb. Number one, be obliged to. Then it says should. Mm. Then in brackets, expressing necessity. You must show your ID card. Number two, expressing an opinion about something. That is logically very likely. There must be something wrong. So, this is my way of thinking with this. If you did go in a court of law, Mike, and you said, oh, well, the regulation says I should have been gas safe registered and competent and qualified. It didn't say must. They would come back to you and say, well, Michael, you should have been gas safe registered. And if you were gas safe registered, you 
probably wouldn't have killed those people because they're criticizing your action. They wouldn't say you must have been gas safe registered because that makes no sense in a court of law. So I guess this is my opinion. Hopefully somebody will put in the comments down below and, and say I'm wrong here. But this is my opinion on this. I think the reason why they use should, because you'll see in a lot of the regulations they use should a lot, because that's how they would portray it if it was in court, because they would be criticizing your actions. So let's find what else good old Michael has to say. Now Michael goes on to say, four minutes 47, again, taking an exam does not make you competent. It is a way of demonstrating competence. You can be competent, dictionary definition, to do a specific task without having taken an exam or undergone formal training. What can I say about that? What can I say that being competent, taking exams doesn't make you competent. What does make you competent then? Does it, is it reading a book? Does that make you competent? Does reading the regulations, does reading the British standards, does that make you competent? That can give you the knowledge, but it doesn't make you competent to do the work. And Michael's not alone. No SAS 66 or whatever you're called. He wrote, I think you're mistaken what competent means. Being licensed in anything doesn't automatically make you competent. But don't you have to be competent before you're licensed? Anyway, Gary Graham also jumps in here. What does he say? Nonsense, my friend. The law states competence only. Gas safe is just a way of proving that, but not the only way. Anyone can lawfully buy components and work on gas if they can prove to be competent. The same goes for electrical work. Now, who's the one who's confused here? <sighs> I know what competent means working on gas, but I don't think these guys do. Anyway, let's get back to Mike. Your driving test analogy is simply wrong. A driving test does not make you competent. It assesses and proves your competence. You can be competent, but not legal to drive without having taken a test. What? All right, okay. So what I was trying to get over is to learn to drive and to be competent and to be legal to do so, you have to take a test, which is kind of the same thing as what you've got to do to work on gas. So what's next on Michael's quest to allow everybody to work on gas in their own homes? 7.20. All of this refers to someone doing gas work in the course of employment, so would not be applicable to working on your own installation, doing it for free, or for someone else who's probably a grey area. And employment should probably be construed to include unpaid work. So, I think this is where he's getting at now from his first part of it, doing work on his own boiler. So say Michael wants to service his own boiler. Because he's not breaking the building regulations, he thinks he would be able to service his own boiler at home. But no, he couldn't do, could he? Because number one, the manufacturer's instructions say this boiler must be serviced by a competent gas safe registered person. So that's his warranty out of the window. Two, he would not hold the qualification to be able to do it. So he wouldn't have CCM1, he wouldn't have CPA1, which is using flue gas analyzers. CCM1 is a safety. And he wouldn't have SEM1. So he then wouldn't be deemed competent to be able to work on his own boiler, even if he did re read the manufacturer's instructions and the building rates and everything else. The other thing is he probably wouldn't have the equipment to be able to test a new boiler. So if he had a new condensing boiler installed, You've got to flue gas analyze the boilers, whether it's a new boiler or an old boiler. Would he have one of them? Would he be able to tell what combustion was like? Would he be able to check the seals? No. So, no, he wouldn't be competent to do it. This is what I don't get. And I think this is what Michael's trying to get over, that he thinks he is allowed, because the law says he can do, work on his own boiler at home, or for friends, if he doesn't get paid. Hmm. But... There is section 83 of the Code of Practice, and Michael has even quoted it. So let's have a look at that. So, Mike has written, I hope you don't mind me calling you Mike, because I do think we're friends at the moment. But Mike has written 83. 
Anyone who does work on gas fittings or gas storage vessels must be competent to do so. Then in brackets, whether or not they are required to be a member of approved class of persons. That means gas safe registered. Therefore, do it yourself gas engineers. Note how they write do it yourself gas engineers, not just DIYers. And those performing favours for friends or relatives all need to have the required competency. The level and range of competency should match the full extent of the work done, but needs only be sufficient for the relevance to that work. So basically what that means is, if one of my engineers wanted to do work at home, they're allowed to do work at home as long as it's not contravening the building regs. So if they want to service their own boiler and they hold CCM1, SEMWAT and CPA1, they're within their own rights to work on their boilers. If they want to do it for family and friends, they can do, as long as they don't get paid for it. But if they wanted to install a boiler, then how would they register it with building control? So you would be breaking the regulations. But also, if the boiler had a long warranty, and the engineer performing the service doesn't have a gas safe registered number to put in, then that would allow the manufacturer of the boiler to get out of their warranty. So uh, that's basically what that means in that section. But Mike goes on to say, nowhere does it redefine the normal dictionary definition of competent. Well, it doesn't, does it, Mike? Because it does that in the ACOP, a code of practice, which we looked at further down the line, where it does say you have to be ACS accredited and gas safe registered. But this little section says, if you're not doing it for payment, or you're doing it for friends, or you're doing it for yourself, you still have to hold the relevant competency to be able to carry out that task. So if you only had boilers, you couldn't fit cookers, or service your own cooker, or service your own fire if you didn't have fires, if you only had boilers. I hope that makes sense. Now let's get this wrapped up because you're probably all bored of this by now and Michael's probably long gone and not even bothered watching this second bit. But I did air my concerns with Mike and say why are you backing unregistered gas work when you obviously realise it is illegal. And he came back with I don't understand why you think I'm defending illegal work. Far from it. I am simply questioning your assertion that all unregistered gas work is illegal as the actual regs would appear to indicate otherwise in specific limited circumstances. My only passion is getting facts right. Well, hopefully now, Michael, your facts have been put right and the myth has been put to bed that you have to be gas safe registered and competent to carry out the work in hand to work on gas. You cannot be a DIYer and work on your, your own house unless you are competent to do so and that means you are holding the relevant ACS current qualifications. And now Michael's final words are these. I'm not suggesting anyone not suitably registered should do gas work but I've yet to see it shown with citations of a specific law slash regulations that somebody having the necessary ability, knowledge or skill doing their own gas work that does not fall under building regulations is breaking any laws. I'm happy to be proved wrong though. Anyone? Well, I think with what we've gone through on this video, I think hopefully now I have proved you wrong, Michael, that you do understand these regulations and the changes that came into force in 2018 are different from those which were originally written in 1998. Anyway, hopefully now, Michael, you're happy with what I've gone through on this video. And if you're not understanding this, I don't know what else I can do. Anyway, I just want to finish off with a few little things before we finally do put this to bed. So let me finish off with some figures for you. So there has been a survey carried out by a company called Project Shout, who have actually interviewed gas engineers to see what they've been finding out after we've come out of lockdown from the pandemic. So what have they actually found out? 
Well, 39% of the engineers they actually questioned have said they are seeing far more dangerous gas appliances when they are going out to service, repair or maintain gas appliances more than they've ever seen before. And 61% of the engineers have also said they've seen dangerous installs. Massive figures. And nearly a third of the engineers, so they say 29% of them, found out that since COVID, they've seen far more dangerous appliances than they've ever seen before. And research also found that during the year 2020 to 2021, 47 people every week were taken to A&E through injuries caused by gas appliances. 10,011 people in that year were also taken to A&E due to fire, smoke and flames. 9,425 people came in contact with hot heating appliances. 8,191 were exposed to gases and vapours. 1,038 was due to explosions of LPG gas cylinders. 534 exposed to hot gases. And 76 due to their boilers erupting and exploding. I hope those figures now might prove to you that gas is dangerous if you try and do it yourself. So are these dangerous appliances there because people didn't want to let engineers into the house due to COVID? Or could they not afford to get an engineer in to fix their appliances during COVID? Or did they just have a go themselves? But it seems a bit weird that the figures are starting to go up and up and up. But one of the other things they did found that CO poisoning had dropped by 18% over the period of March 2020 to March 2021 when we was in the height of the pandemic but they think that was mainly because the symptoms are the same for COVID as they are for carbon monoxide poisoning and people were not really going to the hospitals were they during that time because of the pandemic. Now then that's the end and what has this video actually achieved? Probably not a lot. <laughs> But hopefully now he's got across to Mike that he can't work on his own boiler and what competent means in the gas industry. Doesn't matter about the dictionary, okay? Competent gas engineer means holding a current relevant ACS certificate and being gas safe registered if you're actually getting paid for it. And if you're not getting paid for it, you still need to hold a current ACS certificate for the task in hand and again i'd just like to say <laughs> thanks to mike for this for the questions i'm not i can't say i was picking on mike because he was the one who came across with the best way and the most respectful way for his questions so i thank you for that uh, mike for being very respectful and just wanting to know uh, the correct procedure so hopefully we're there the stuff we've gone through of the two videos are the HSE ever going to prosecute somebody who does their own work? Well, technically no, unless they damage something, send somebody to hospital or create an explosion or whatever, and they've got something to prosecute. Because what we're finding now is my engineers and the trainees, once they've qualified, they're going out there. They're sending me pictures on a daily basis of dangerous gas work, which we've never had before. This is the main reason for this video, is there's too many people thinking the regulations are on their side and they can do whatever they want in their own home. But you're dangerous and you're going to kill somebody. And all right, are you going to kill somebody servicing your appliance? Well, if you don't know how to service it correctly, you leave a gas leak or you're leaving products of combustion spilling back into the room because you haven't got the equipment to do your testing, then yes, you're going to kill someone. So my advice is... Don't do it yourself unless you are qualified and competent to do so. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you're new to the channel, you've not subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe because it helps. Don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Some days at the moment. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and... 
get a registered engineering guys be safe catch you on the next one guys cheers